students, so for today's video, we will be learning about budgeting. So this is the third topic for the subject business finance. So we are done with the areas of finance, the division of finance, and the forecasting. Now we are to discuss all about budgeting. So budgeting is the process or act of preparing a financial budget. So this is very important. Budgeting is very important to a company especially when you are done with the forecasting because you need to budget your finances which um, fix siya or fit siya sa projection na ginawa mo or forecasting na ginawa mo for your sales your production schedules, and any other forecasting that you have done. So, budget refers to a plan which is expressed in a quantitative monetary value. So, it all it is all about money, right? Presents the ways of achieving the goals and objectives in the quantitative form. So, may mangyayaring um, paggamit ng pera when you are to budget. And then, so, the benefits of budgeting is first is a planning is facilitated. So, planning is facilitated in terms of the benefits of budgeting. First benefit is planning is facilitated. So, when we say planning is facilitated, goals and objectives are set in terms of monetary value. Then, direction of the business is identified because you are done with the forecasting, then you need to budget for the money needed for those forecasting that you have established. Number two, financial coordination is established. So, when financial coordination is established, activities are properly coordinated to other units or department to produce a unified output. So, in terms of budgeting, all of the departments in the company um, involve sila lahat. So, hindi lang yung financing department, the production department as well as the sales and the marketing department, they are involved in the budgeting because each of the department has the knowledge on what to do, on what to do during the budgeting. Number three, resources are properly allocated. So, this is very important because this is connected with your applied economic subject. When there is a resources, you should properly allocate it for you to be able to use it properly. Okay, um, resources are scarce and limited. That is why we need to allocate it para merong merong kapang gagamitin sa susunod na mga um, gagawin mong products and services. So, hindi mo siya magagamit lahat on that um, example, on that month of producing a product. So, dapat the whole year mo siya lang, uh, the whole year mong magagamit yung mga resources mo if you properly allocate those resources. Number four, moral of employees is improved. Diba, sinabi natin sa financial coordination is established in which all of, the part, all of the departments are involved in the planning or in the budgeting is it will also increase the morale of the, the employees. It is because um, when the employees are given opportunity to participate in the preparation of the budget, employees feel that they are valued. So, they are valued in terms of the knowledge they have known on what to do during the budgeting and also they are valued in terms of ah my my uh, masasabi ng mga employee mo na ah kailangan para talaga uh, my value or my contribution pala talaga kami dito sa company because in terms of budgeting may say kami or may sinasabi kami na mag uh, tutulong para you will get the goals set by the company in terms of budgeting. Number five is control mechanism is enhanced. In the control mechanism, all financial activities are aligned to the plan. So, di ba, meron kayong planning is facilitated. So, control mechanism, lahat ng nangyayari in terms of budgeting should be on the goal na sinet ninyo. Okay, so those are the benefits of budgeting. Now, let us proceed to the procedures of budgeting. 
So, there are five procedures. First is prepare the sales budget. Di ba, nag-sales forecast ka? So, dapat may sales budget ka. Next is prepare the production budget. May production schedule forecast ka. Meron ka ding production budget. So, in line silang dalawa, the forecasting and the budgeting. Prepare the projected operation expenses and financing charges. So, nag-project ka rin nito, di ba? Uh, I mean, nag-forecast ka rin nitong mga um, operating expenses. And then, prepare the financial budget and capital budget. And prepare the projected statement of comprehensive income. So, those are the procedures in budgeting. So, now... We will proceed on first uh, procedure. It is the sales budget. Okay. For the sales budget, um, proceed tayo sa example. For us to be able to know on how to get the sales budget. Okay. Jenny Manufacturing Company sold 23,430 units of product AM in 2018 which was higher by 10% compared to the units sold in 2017. The products were sold 300 pesos per unit. Because of heavy advertising and other promotional activities and shift in buyers' preferences, the company expects to increase the sales by 15% in 2019 against the 2018 performance. The company, um, Pels Pulse, it's a typographical error ata to sell the product at a 350 per unit. So, required prepare the sales budget in 2019. So, in preparing the sales budget for Jenny Manufacturing Company, ganito mo siya is a solve. Okay. So, you will write Jenny Manufacturing company okay and then sales budget for the year for year 2019 okay so ang una mong kukunin is the projected sales so projected sales okay for the projected sales Sinabi sa problem, we'll go back to the problem, no? Um, 15%, okay, ito, company expect to increase the sales by 15% in 2019. So, as you can see, um, 2018 is 23,430 units ang kanilang na-sold. So, gusto ng company that in 2019, it will be 15% higher to 2018. Um, okay. So, dito muna tayo magsasolve tayo, no? Okay. Solving lang to. Ito yung um, proper na structure ng sales budget. So, dito, ipapakita lang na natin kung paano isasolve yung projected sales. Okay. So, maybe it's familiar to you. Okay. Doon sa um, forecasting, ganito rin yung pag-solve natin. Okay. So, for the year 2018, meron tayong 23,430 units. And then, sinabi na gusto ng company na 15% higher from this ang sales ng 2019. So, 23,430 23,430 times 0.15, it is 3,514.5. Okay. And then from that, kasi higher, di ba? So, it is increasing. So, i-add mo si, si 23,430 to the 3,000. So, ang mong amount is... 26,944.5 So, ito yung projected sales mo for 2019. Okay. 
So, yan ang projected sales mo. We will go back to the proper structure of the sales budget. Okay. So, susulat mo dito, selling. I'm sorry. Masyadong malayo. Okay. Selling units. So, ito talaga yung proper structure ha. So, Sundin nyo lang to, then, as well as the solving. Estimated price, and then the sales, which is in peso na yan. Okay? So, yung nakuha nyo dito, na projected sales, which is the 26,944.5, or we will round it off to 945. Okay? So, it's 26,000. 945, ni-round off ko lang. And then, di ba, sinabi sa problem, okay, sinabi sa problem na nag-increase siya ng 15% and they wanted to sell it to 350 per unit. Di ba, yung 2018 is sinel na lang ng 300 per unit. So, in 2019, it's 350 per unit. Okay, estimated price ang 350 per unit. Okay. From that, you will now get the sales in peso. So, 26,944 times 350, it is 9,430,750. Okay. So, that is your projected sales for 2019. So, as you can see, it is very simple. You just need to first compute for the projected sales and then multiply mo lang siya sa price or estimated price and then you will get your sales budget. Okay? So, now, next, we will proceed to another budget which is the production budget so in forecasting we have production schedule um, forecast and then in budgeting we have the production budget in the production budget this is how we will solve it so the example is a bone processing company in the production of one unit product AB requires the following raw materials Two units of materials X and three units of material Y. The company expect to sell 26,945 units of product AB in 2019. The inventory data for AB are as follows. Beginning inventory is 350 units. I, I mean 3,500 units. Ending inventory is... 5,600 units. The cost of the beginning inventory of the product AB is 200 per unit. On January 1, 2019, Yvonne has 12,200 units of material X and 28,800 units of material Y. Material Y. It plans to have an inventory of 18,000 units of material X and 36,000 units of material Y on December 31, 2019. The estimated overhead are as follows. So, variable cost based on unit produced the indirect materials, light and water, and other variable cost, and fixed cost, the salary of supervisors, depreciation, taxes, and other fixed costs. So, this is the problem that we will be using in terms of solving the production schedule. So, class, in getting the production schedule for the budgeting is that we need to solve for this following schedule schedule one which is number of units to produce schedule two raw materials required to production for the production schedule three direct labor budget schedule four factory overhead budget and schedule five raw materials to purchase so as you remember in the production schedule for the forecasting it was also very long process so, the same with the production budget, it is a very long 
classes. First that we will be getting is for the schedule 1, which is the number of units to produce. If may narinig kayo na ganyan, aso po namin yun, natutulog. <laughs> Humihilik. Okay, so first natin kukunin for the schedule number 1, which is number of units to produce, is the number of units to sell. So for the problem, it was given. So, the number of units to sell, it was given in the problem, it is 26,495. Okay. And then, next mo na kukunin is the um, add. So, itong, structu itong structure na to for the schedules, these are all the same. Magdi-differ lang sila sa mga given na mga numbers in the problem. So, itong dito, these are all the same in structure. So, you will add the plan inventory level. Okay. So, balik tayo sa problem. Nasaan yung plan inventory level? So, ito yung plan inventory level which is given na sa problem. Ito, Ending inventory, December 31, 2019, typographical error. This is the plan, 5,600 5, units. So, you will add 5,600 units. Next na process na kukunin mo is the total estimated, total estimated production cost. Okay. Total estimated production cost which is the total of that in the number 32,095. Okay. From that you will less the beginning inventory. Okay. For the beginning inventory it was given also in the problem. It is 3,500. So, ililess mo siya. So, makukuha mo na ang estimated number of units to produce. So, ang na makukuha mong amount is 28,595. So, this is your number of units to produce. Okay. So, that is your schedule 1. First, number of units to sell at the plan inventory. Then, you will get the total estimated production cost. Less beginning inventory. Then, you will get your estimated number of units to produce. So, you are done with schedule 1. Okay, now, proceed to your schedule number 2. So, sinulat ko na yung structure niya. Ito yung structure niya for the materials, uh, for the schedule to raw materials for production. So, in the problem, it was stated that the materials needed to produce product AB is material X and Y. So, here it is. Material x and material y. So, mana siyang ito yung x and y. Okay. First, number of units to produce. For the number of units to produce, you've already solved it on the schedule number 1, which is 28,595. 28,595. Okay, so now you will multiply it by the number per unit. So, we will go back to the problem. Okay, number per unit. So, how much, sinasabi dito, Ivon Processing Company, in the production of one unit 
product AB requires the following raw materials. 2 units for material X and 3 units for material Y. So, dyan mo ilalagay sa multiplied by the unit which is 2 units for material X and 3 units for material Y. From that, you will get the materials required for production. So, how much would that be? 57,190. And then, sa material Y is 85,785. Next is, you will multiply it for the cost per unit. So, we will go back to the problem for the cost per unit. So, in the cost per unit, ah, nasaan yan? Um, okay, hanapin natin for the cost per unit. Okay, class. So, meron tayong typo error kanina now. So, um, kinorek ko lang. So, in this problem, kanina, Wala tayo nakita dito, right? So, chinek ko. Hindi ko pala nakapi sa PowerPoint. Yung the cost of the raw materials per unit are as follows. Material X is 6 pesos. Material Y is 18 pesos. The direct labors are, the direct, re, direct labors are paid based on the numbers of units they have produced at the, price, at the rate of 90 pesos per unit. So, ang gagamitin mo dito, multiplied by cost per unit, is the 6 pesos for the 6 pesos for the material x and 18 pesos for the material y and then you will get the cost to produce the product in the amount of in the amount of um, 343,000 and then one i am sorry Three hundred forty-three thousand one forty, and then one million five hundred forty-four one hundred thirty. So in this problem for the schedule number two, we will round it off to thousands. So, magiging three hundred forty-three thousand, and then one million five hundred forty-four thousand. Okay. Bakit natin ito ginagawa is para buo yung um, budgeting natin na gagawin. Walay, kung sabi saya pa, walay bungkig. Okay, right? I'm sorry for the wrong angle of the camera. So, this is the cost to produce for Y, 1,544,130. Uh, 1, and then, um, rounded off to 1,000, it's 1,544,000. So, this is your schedule number 2 on solving for the raw materials for the production. So, cost to produce the product. Okay? So, now, we will proceed to the, um, itotal muna natin to, which means this is the direct materials. Okay? Direct materials because ito yung mga material na kailangan mo to produce the product. A, B. Okay? So, ang total niya is 1,889,000. So, this is your direct materials. So, now, you will, we will proceed to solving your schedule number 3. Okay, class. So, this is the schedule 3 for direct labor budget. So, this is the structure First is the estimated number of units multiplied by the direct labor rate and then you will get your estimated direct labor. Why are we always using the estimated? Because this is a budget. So, my budget na kung um, example yung budget mo is 1 million and then 1 million talaga yung nagamit mo then it's very good. But then may mga times talaga na yung budget mo is 1 million uh, masasobra an yun, 1 million 40, ay, 1 million 40 pesos, or 1 million 400 thousand, ganyan ang budgeting. Pero at least, you know the budget already. Okay, so we will proceed to 
solving your schedule number three for the estimated number of units it was solved in the schedule number one so ang nakuha natin sa schedule number one is 28,595 multiplied by the direct labor rate which is given in the problem okay the direct labor rate is 90 pesos per unit so 90 pesos per unit so you will multiply 90 pesos so you will be getting 2,574,000 okay this is rounded off that amount is rounded off because when you multiply 28,595 to 90 you will get 2,573,550 so, ni rounded off into thousands, naging 2,574,000. So, that is your schedule number 3. So, number 3 is very um, simple, right? So, now, we will proceed to your schedule number 4. Okay, class. So, this is the structure for schedule 4, factory overhead budget. So, if you notice, itong structure na to is makikita nyo sa problem given. Ito. So, in the problem given, ito yun, variable cost, indirect, light and water, and other variable cost, and then fixed cost, salary, depreciation, taxes, and other fixed cost. So, ito yung mga amount, um, amount na gagamitin nyo, gagamitin nyo, in solving for schedule number four so first let us focus for variable manufacturing cost so in the variable manufacturing cost what you will be um, using is yung nakuha nyo sa schedule number one yung number of units to produce it is very important to first get the schedule number one kasi very useful siya sa lahat ng schedule na isosolve ninyo Okay, the uh, stated number of units to produce is 28,595. So, for the variable cost, um, affected siya ng number of units to produce in schedule number 1. So, dito mo gagamitin itong mga amount na ito dahil per unit siya. It means you will multiply that to the amount you had get in schedule number 1. One, which is the 28,595. So, for the direct materials, ang per unit niya is 6.50 pesos. If you multiply it to 28,595, it is 186,000. Okay, mind you, in budgeting, it is rounded to 1,000. Okay, so kung i-times niyo yung 28,595 times 6.50, it is 185,867. Okay, rounded off to 1,000, so magiging 186. Okay, let us proceed. For the light and water, 295 times the unit, the per unit for light and water is 12.20, you will get 300. 49,000. Okay. Lagay ko na lang dito, no? 28,595 times 6.50 and then 28,595 times 12.20. Okay. Para alam nyo kung anong nangyayari sa mga amounts na yan. And then, the other variable cost is in the amount of per unit niya is 18.80 so 28,595 times 18.80 okay so ang makukuha mong amount from that is 529,000 and then you will get the total for the variable manufacturing cost in the amount of 1,064,000 so, you are done for the variable manufacturing cost. Now, we will proceed to the 
fixed cost. So, for the fixed cost, from the word fixed, so, wala nang multiplication namang yayari. Kung ano ang given ng problem, yun ang gagamitin mo na mga amounts. So, you will rewrite it to the, to the schedule. Okay, for the salary of supervisors, it is 250,000. And then, for the depreciation, it is 420,000. For the taxes, it's 100,000. And then, for the other fixed cost, it's 230,000. All in all, the total for the fixed cost is 1 million. And then, total mo silang dalawa. From the total variable manufacturing cost, added yung total fixed cost, makukuha mo yung total estimated cost overhead in the amount of 2 million 64 pesos. So, that is your schedule number 4 factor re overhead budget. Okay, we're almost there. Schedule number 5 na tayo. So, let us proceed to schedule number 5. Okay, class, so this is the schedule 5, which is the final schedule for the production budget. Raw materials to purchase. So, ito yung structure. This is the material X and this is the material Y. Okay, for the materials required to purchase, uh, uh, to production, um, nakuha nyo to when you are solving for the schedule number 1. So, you go back to the schedule number 1. Makikita nyo to na pangalan doon. Yung amount na um, naka-inline sa kanya, yun yung kukunin ninyong for the materials required for production. So, it is 57,190 and then for material Y, it's 85,785. Okay? Next is add for the plan inventory. For the plan inventory, it was given in the problem. So, we will go back to the problem. Okay. So, on January 1, 2019, Yvonne has 12 units of material X. It plans to have an inventory of 18 units of material X and 36 units of material Y. So, it was stated that the plan ending inventory is 18 units and 36 units. So, 18 units... And 36 units. Add mo silang dalawa, makukuha mo ang 75,190 and then 121,785. And then, less the beginning inventory which was also stated in the problem. Okay. Here. 12,228,008 so are the beginning inventory for material X and material Y. Okay. So, it is 12,200 for material X and 28,800 for material Y. So, mahukuha mo dyan, when you less this amount is the required materials to purchase. In the amount of 62,990 and 92,985. And then, you multiply by unit price. So, the unit price is, nakuha niyo na yun kanina, which is the 6 for the X and 18 for the Y. It was given in the problem also. So, the cost to purchase is, for material X is 378,000 and then for material Y is 1,674,000. So mind you, these amounts are rounded off to thousands. Okay? 
So that is your schedule number five. So we are done with all the schedules for the production budgeting. Okay. So next nothing gagawin is the um, projected cost of sales for a bond processing company. Okay, class. So we are done with the procedures in to prepare sales budget, prepare the production budget. So now we are to prepare the projected operation expenses and financing charges. So this is the number three, uh, the, the third step on preparing the production budgeting. Okay. So, hindi ko na siya isusulat sa whiteboard kasi masyado na siyang mataas. So, hindi na kaya maliit lang kasi yung whiteboard ko. Okay. Now, for the raw materials, this is your manufacturing cost. For the raw materials inventory, for material X and material Y, this is your beginning inventory for each of the materials, which is the 12,500. 1,200 and then the 28,800. If we go back to the problem, okay, if we go back to the problem, here is the problem. Mm -hmm. So, in January 1, Yvonne has 12,200 units of material X and 28,800 for material Y. So, that is your um, beginning inventory times the 6 pesos which is the cost per unit for material X and 18 pesos which is the cost per unit for material Y. So, ito yung makukuha mong mga amounts. The 74,000 and the 519,000 rounded off to 1,000. Remember, it is always rounded off to 1,000. Okay. Next is Total mo silang dalawa. Ito yung 593. Next is you will add the purchases which is in schedule number 5. Ito yung schedule number 5 na 2,645,000. Ang schedule number 5 mo, nandito pa siya sa aking whiteboard. Okay. For the schedule number 5, total mo tong dalawa which is the cost to purchase. So, Total mo tong 378,000 plus 1,674,000. Yan yung add purchases mo which is the schedule number 5. Okay. Dayon, next is total material use. You will add the 593,000 to 2,052,000. So, you will get the amount of 2,645,000. Thousand. Now, we will proceed, proceed to the less raw materials ending inventory. So, for the material X is 18,000 and for material Y is 36,000. These amounts or these figures are stated in the problem times the per unit which is 6 pesos and per unit which is 18 pesos. Then, you will get this amount. And then, Total mo silang dalawa. Itong 108,000 plus 648,000, you will get the 756,000. And then, what you will be doing is sinabi dito less, right? From the total material use, you will less it to this amount. So, the 2,645,000 less 756,000, you will get the direct material cost which is 1,889,000. Okay? La Next is the factory overhead. The factory overhead is nakuha niyo ito doon sa schedule number 4 which is the 2,064,000. So, you will add I mean, my direct labor cost pa pala. So, nakuha nyo rin itong direct labor cost sa schedule number 3 mo, which is the 2,574,000. And then, the factory overhead is sa schedule number 4 mo, which is the 2,064,000. Add mo silang tatlo. Itong direct material cost mo, direct labor, at saka yung factory overhead, makukuha mo si... 
27,000. Next is, okay class, the same as what is happening to your schedules, etong structure na ito is as is siya. Ang magde-differ lamang are the amounts in here. Okay, etong structure na to dito, the same lang siya. Meaning, kung um, problem given in your activity is fill in mo lang itong mga um, structure na nandiyan, mga words na nandito. Fill in mo lang to ng mga amounts na given sa problem. Okay, next is add working in progress beginning. In the problem, it is not given, so leave zero. And then, less working in progress ending in the problem, walang given na ganyan. So, wala kayong ilalagay sa so zero. So, proceed to the total cost of goods manufacturers. So, kunin nyo lang yung amount na 6,527,000. Drop nyo lang dyan. Kasi wala namang nangyayari dyan eh. Wala kang in wala kang niles. So, walang nawala sa amount. And then, add finished goods beginning. So, if you remember in the problem, may finished goods beginning tayo. Ito, 3,500 units. Which is, ang kanyang, ano, ang kanyang unit cost is 200. Ito. Um, where is it? Dito lang. Ano, ito. So, um, lakihan natin. Ito yung 3,500 per unit na beginning. And then, um, ang kanyang sell per unit is 200 pesos. Okay, ito. 200 pesos. So, let's go back to the problem. I mean, the structure. So, from that, finished goods beginning 3,500 times 200 pesos. It is 700 pesos. I-add mo siya ang 6 million to 700 magiging 7 million 227 thousand which is the total goods available for sale. And then less the finished goods ending inventory. Okay. Finished goods ending inventory is for the finished goods less fin less. Finish goods ending. Itong 6,527,000. As you notice, ito yung amount na yan. Oh. And then, you divided it with the um, schedule number 1 mo. Yung number of units to produce, which is 28,595 times mo ng 5,600, which is given sa problem. Ayan o. Oh. Given siya sa problem uh, plan mo to eh. ito yung plan mo na dapat meron ka 5,600 and then my number to produce ka na 28,595 so i-divide mo yan so operate mo 5, uh, 6,527,000 divided by 28,595 times uh, ang makukuha mo is 228.2566882. Okay. Yan yung nandito sa calculator ko. Times 5,600, ang makukuha mo is 1,278,237.4.454. Okay. And then, in this problem, in this solving is... Rounded off to 2,000 tayo. So, it's 1,279. So, ito na yung amount na yun. It's 1,279. And then, you will less it to the 7 million. And then, you will get the estimated cost of sale or the operating expenses, which is 5,948,000. ,000. I hope nakuha niyo yung process. Okay, so that is how you will get the um, production expenses on the uh, operating expenses on the production schedule. Okay, class, so this is the production budget. So you are done with solving for the schedule number one, two, three, and four, and five. 
So, this is your production budget, direct materials, which is your schedule 2, direct labor, which is your schedule 4, factory overhead, which is your schedule 5, and then you will get the total estimated production cost. So, now, we will proceed on making your, preparing your estimated statement of comprehensive income or budgeted comprehensive income. So, for the sale, it is... Can, um, it is estimated man, no, or budget or forecasted. So, the same with what we have done in um, forecasting 2019 yung gagamitin natin. So, for this, in the year 2019, sinasabi na um, the company expect to sell 26,945 units of product in 2019. And then, it will be sold um, in 200 pesos kay. Kasi hindi naman sinabi sa problem na mayroon itong ibang um, units na um, presyo ng, per unit ng product. So, gagamitin natin si 200 pesos. Okay. So, 26,945 times 200 pesos, it is 5 million so, for the sale in 2019, it's 5,389,000. So, nanggaling ito sa 26,945 times the 200 pesos. These are all given in the problem. Next is the cost of sales. The cost of sales is nakuha nito when you are um, solving for the manufacturing cost yung sinob natin a while ago so the cost of sales is 5 million ang laki 948,000 okay for the 5,948,000 so those are the budgets that are needed to conduct in your company the sales budget and the production budget so for the next step on the um, budgeting which are um balik tayo dito sa powerpoint natin the next step is to prepare the financial budget and capital budget so dito mo dapat i-prepare ang mga pera na kailangan ng company to produce the product that you wanted for the year you projected for example it's 2019 and then it if hindi pa enough yung capital na meron yung company or cash na meron yung company pwede kang pumunta sa banko para mag-apply ng loan for you to be able to Put enough money for the production that you've projected. And then the last procedure is the number five, prepare the projected statement of comprehensive income. For this step, hindi na kailangan natin isa-isahin pa yung proseso ng statement of comprehensive income because we are done um, discussing it um, in your subject fundamentals of accounting to during your grade 12 first semester. So, kayo na mismo yung... Alam niyo na mismo kung paano gawin yung statement of comprehensive income. Okay, that would be all for the topic budgeting. The video is very long. I hope you've learned something on it, especially on the solving. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, see you in the next video.